trying something different today, going going full on fanboy and totally not hiding my perm under this hat. Welcome to That's Good Broncos prediction episode. I am Brandon. It's week nine, and these are already not fun to do anymore, Perna. The Broncos are 4-4, four and four, but they feel like a 1-7 team facing their best opponent of the season so far this Sunday in We Dem Boys Again, Cowboys. Spoiler alert, I think the Cowboys win on Sunday. Unless, of course, Jerry Jones asks the Broncos players to chip in for the honor of playing in Jerry World. Like Vaughn asked for his six-figure Halloween party. That could motivate these guys to play hard. In the name of getting paid, Broncos versus Cowboys. Let's see if there are any battles the Broncos could win. Let's go, Broncos. If you have any interest in staying abreast of Broncos news this season, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Today's episode brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. NFL fans, are you hungry for a big win this week? Well, DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, has you covered. New customers can bet just $5 on any NFL team to win their game, and if they do, you win $200 in free bets. Winner, winner! Chicken dinner! I had chicken last night, actually. It is that simple. DraftKings Sportsbook customers can also get skin in the game. Not just chicken skin either. With new same game parlays. Combine multiple bets from the same game. Game for a bigger payout. The more legs you add, chicken legs, the more money you can win. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. So use code DNVR, DNVR, when you sign up over at DraftKings to take advantage of their offers. Uh, I'm struggling to find any advantages for the Broncos in this game. Well, maybe, maybe Von Miller on the A. Oh, fuck, that's right, he's gone. <laughs> this game will be played at Jerry World, so half point for the Cowboys for home field advantage, but Broncos do get a Half point for not trading Von Miller to the Cowboys, who were in play for the former face of our franchise. Coach versus coach. The best thing I can say about this coaching matchup is there's a chance the Broncos are going to be looking across the field at their future, which God willing will be Kellen Moore and not Dan Quinn, who in all fairness has done a really good job with the pieces he's been given on defense, but some guys are best suited to just be coordinators. Speaking of, Vic Fangio versus Mike McCarthy isn't the whole story. In fact, Mike McCarthy strikes me as Vic Fangio if Vic Fangio had two Hall of Fame quarterbacks to work with. I of course mean Dak Prescott and Cedric Wilson. But to me, this is how much better Dallas's coordinators are than the Broncos coordinators. Kellen Moore proved last week that he can keep the Cowboys offense rolling, whether it's Dak Prescott or Cooper Rush, starting his first ever game in the NFL. Pat Shermer has proved that his offense is stagnant, whether it's Teddy or Drew. So advantage for the Cowboys by 500 points. Broncos defense versus Cowboys offense. This is easily the best offense the Broncos have faced so far this season. Even with Cooper Rush getting the start last week, the Cowboys have the third scoring offense and the third most efficient passing attack in the league. It's a little shocking, but Dallas's rushing attack is almost as good as their passing game, averaging a fourth best 4.9 yards per carry. Somehow, Tony Pollard is averaging 5.8 yards per carry, a whole yard more than Zeke Elliott, but Zeke, has 50 more carries than his backup this season. Which is what happens when you pay a running back $90 million. Zeke and Pollard are like Chubb and Hunt light. They have Dallas over 1,000 rushing yards this season, which is fourth best in the league. The Cowboys have three good, healthy receivers right now, but the guy you have to worry about the most is C.D. Lamb. 
who's already over 600 yards this season, averaging a team-best 15.6 yards per reception. Which is why I call him Laser Disc Lamb. Blu-ray Lamb. MP3 Lamb. Plus, Dallas is a team like the Bucks, or what the Chiefs used to be, who can throw very efficiently, get this, in the red zone. It will be weird to see what that looks like as a Broncos fan. On Denver's side, this is a defense that's now without Von Miller and Bryce Callahan. Their best player up front and their best player on the back end. Uh, Callahan could spend the next eight weeks on IR. Uh, Callahan's been really solid all season. Although I think Patrick Sertan might have surpassed him as the best corner on the team. Am I Sertan of that? I'm certain that the only thing I have in this episode that's worth a damn is wordplay. No, I'm not certain, but at least Denver can unbench Kyle Fuller to come in and help slow the Cowboys' three-headed monster of ball catchers. That's right, I see you, Dalton Schultz, tight end. Schultz, seventh in yards for tight ends with three TDs on the year. Unfortunately, against the Cowboys, you need three or four Patrick Sertans if you want a chance to shut them down. Von Miller putting pressure on the quarterback would have been nice uh, in this game. I would uh, have Sertan shadow CeeDee Lamb and make the Cowboys beat you with someone else, which is probably something they will do. Uh, Amari Cooper, 200 receiving yards in this game, probably. Advantage, Cowboys here. 39 points. Now I will be watching Malik Reed. Uh, Steven, I need to always wear sunglasses because my last name is Weatherly and Jonathan Cooper very closely this week. The defensive line played very well against a bad and horribly injured football team O-line. Dallas right now though has one of the best all around offensive lines in football. So we can truly gauge where some of these young players are right now without Vaughn in this game. Broncos offense versus Cowboys defense. The Cowboys have 11 interceptions as a defense, the most of any team this year. Obviously, uh, more than half of those are thanks to Trayvon Diggs, who's the most boom or bust corner this season. Although he's coming off a game where he just held Justin Jefferson to 21 yards on two receptions. Diggs reminds me a lot of Marcus Peters. You can beat him sometimes, but he's also good enough to pick six Peyton Manning. Uh, one of their unsung heroes on defense is edge rusher Randy Gregory, who leads the team in five sacks. That said, the Cowboys aren't particularly adept at rushing the passer. Currently, they're 28th in sacks per game at 1.7. Uh, so maybe it's not the worst week to be missing Garrett Bowles. Dallas is missing Demarcus Lawrence on that defensive front, and he's not coming back this week or next week due to his broken foot. They have been creative with Micah Parsons, who has the second most pressures on the team. But maybe the Broncos can protect Teddy this week and maybe the Cowboys get a boost on the edge in December when uh, Lawrence returns. This is a defense that you can throw against and you can take your time doing it. Despite the interceptions, the Cowboys allow seven yards per attempt, which is 24th in the league, but they are average against the run. What does being average against the run mean when you play the Broncos? Nothing. Because what's Shermer gonna do, whether or not you're good or bad against the run, good or bad against the pass? You're gonna do the same damn thing he does every week, which is nothing! Nothing! I mean, did you watch the Broncos offense against the horrible football team defense? The Denver offense, to their credit, moved the ball effectively until they got to the opponent's 30 yard line. Then they started to move in the wrong direction, and the football team defense is far worse than the Cowboys. If there's a shred of hope, I think it is the Broncos' tight ends. Use them both and target them frequently, especially Albert O. Dallas has struggled against tight ends this season, which is odd considering there's about nine linebackers on the field at any given moment for the Cowboys. Now Dallas has given up the fourth fewest rushing yards on the season, Probably because teams abandon the run early and try to keep pace with Dallas's offense. But I'm done trying to figure out how the Broncos will not run effectively and not pass effectively in the red zone. Dallas gets 
66 points here. The Broncos, minus 27, specifically. So what are some of the X factors that could help the Broncos or Cowboys win? Well, my friend Scooter Magruder is a huge Cowboys fan. This is a special season. You know what I'm gonna say? This is our year, baby. And Scooter is also a devout Christian. And I am starting to believe he has God on his side helping the Cowboys win games this season. To combat God, I've got my curse. Dallas received the Wheel of Pain curse on my weekly Power Rankings episode. A curse so powerful it has literally destroyed every team it's touched this year. If the Cowboys survive that this week, they may be the favorites to win the Super Bowl. Another X Factor, Brandon McManus, the Gooch Slayer himself, has only missed one kick this entire season, and that includes extra points. That puts him alongside Justin Tucker and Tyler Bass in field goal percentage this season. I think if the Broncos get creative and just attempt a field goal every time they get within 53 yards, McManus could set the record for most field goals in a game with nine. That would be 27 points, tying the Broncos' season high in points this year. Another X Factor, the Cowboys are wearing red, white, and blue stripes on their helmet on Sunday, which means if the Broncos win, Jerry Jones will ask President Joe Biden to classify the Broncos as a terrorist organization. I mean, if they do something as un-American as beating the Cowboys in the red, white, and blue, he has no choice. Look, the Cowboys average more points per game at 32.1 than the Broncos have even scored in a single game this season. 27's their high. So my final score prediction, Cowboys win 38 psh, to 19. Psh. Thanks for watching. Uh, we're still trying to pretend to be interested in the Broncos predictions. I mean, Jesus Christ, we need something, something to change for this team. But I'm optimistic. Ah!